Thank you for listening to this message from the pulpit of New Grace Baptist Church in Roanoke, Virginia. We hope the message you are about to hear is a blessing to you and your family. Now this evening as we continue through the end times, we are not going to be in the book of Revelation. We are going to be in the book of Mark and 1 Peter and 2 Peter and 1 Timothy and Hebrews and Matthew. So we're going to start in Mark 10. We're going to be all over the place. Because uh, we're, we're beginning a new kind of a section um, looking at uh, the end times. We're going to start looking at God's timeline. So just to review so we all remember where we're at. Um, this is, of course, the outline of the book of Revelation. And we said, of course, book chapters 1 is the things that John saw. Chapters 2 and 3 are the things that are, and that's the church age, kind of where we are right now. And then the last, uh, then chapters 4 through 22 are the things that will be. Um, then, of course, we spent the last two weeks looking at chapters 2 and 3, and we, we really saw the history uh, of the church on the earth. And, of course, the letters to the church that John uh, wrote, Jesus dictated these letters, John wrote these letters, uh, they're not just, they, they were letters to real churches that existed at the time, but in the, the scope of, of all of Scripture, they really kind of give us a timeline uh, of the history of the church. Um, <clears throat> so each letter characterized the church uh, or a part of its history, and we, we spent, you know, last week specifically looking at the church of Laodicea, really to see that we are in the church of Laodicean age. We are in the, the last days, which is characterized by uh, really a, a shrinking of the, the, tr- the true church. Uh, of course, there's you know what we consider the visible church, and then there is the invisible church. And the invisible church is those uh, group of believers who truly are saved who truly all have accepted Christ as their Savior. They teach the gospel, they believe the gospel, and they're working to build God's kingdom. And then you have the visible church, which is, is getting, uh, the, the visible church is getting bigger, and the invisible church is getting smaller uh, in these last days. And you really see that uh, in, in society and in culture, in, especially in our church culture. There is a, a big thing now called progressive Christianity, um, where people are starting churches as progressive. And look, being progressive sounds, sounds right, doesn't it? I mean, no one wants to be oppressive or regret. We want to be progressive. Uh, so it sounds good. It sounds enticing. But really what they, they teach is that there are many ways to salvation, and God accepts everyone as they are. And so you don't, you, you know, when you, once you, all you have to do to be saved is believe in God, and you're saved, and then you can live your life however you want to live it. And that's a great way to build a, build a church. Not a true church, but a church. Uh, I mean, if we wanted to get a crowd, I could just start saying stuff like that, and man, we'd have people coming out of the woodworks. But that's not a true church. That's not true believers. Um, and look, I, it's hard. Uh, you know, I was talking April today after church. The church was hard today for me. Uh, I was very uh, discouraged this morning. Uh, got up. This morning, was excited, had a great message, was prepared, uh, had a good Sunday school, uh, and then, you know, got to sing, and just, and, and I know it's summertime, I know a lot of people are vacation, uh, I know we got a lot of sick, out of the crowd, and, and just, I got real discouraged, let me be honest with you all, uh, I felt like, why am I, why am I doing this, why am I even here, why am I singing, you know, this is, I ain't doing nothing, but that's, that's, it's going to be that way. In the church of Laodicea, it's, it's going to be harder and harder to really truly reach true believers. And so we just have to stand firm and be faithful and be a true church that preaches the gospel and doesn't, give, doesn't you know, change our message just to, to make people happy, uh, doesn't you know, water down the gospel to make people come. But that's, that's what the church of Laodicea is. And uh, so that's where we are. We're in the church of Laodicea age. Now, we don't know how long... This church age will will last. Um, we can tell we're, we're near the end of it, but when you start talking about eternity, the end, you know, God's timeline is is vast. You know, the Bible says that to the God, a thousand years is as a day, and a day is as a thousand years. You know, time time is is does, has no meaning to God. Uh, time is irrelevant to Him. When you're an eternal being, 
and you've been since eternity past, and you're going to be in eternity future, a thousand years is nothing. So we can, we can say we are near the end of the church of Laodicea and the end of the age, but we still don't have any idea when that end's going to come. Uh, could be today, could be tomorrow, could be another thousand years. We don't know. But we do know that we're near the end of it. Um, now, we look at the signs that Paul and John gave us to determine that we are in the last days. We are near the end. Now, for the believer, uh, this is good news. Um, being near the end of the days and the end of the age is good news for us because it means, you know, all the, the things we deal with on earth, all the suffering, all the hardships, all the heartbreak, all the, the turmoil we go through, it's coming to an end. It, it's, not, it's not forever. That we are, we are nearing the end. Um, for the lost, of course, it's bad news. Now, I want to take what we've learned and kind of put it on a timeline um, to really see, you know, this is eternity future, that's eternity past, to see uh, where we are uh, and what we've learned from this timeline. Now, we know the things that John saw are right here, after the ascension, before the church age. This is the things that John saw, those are chapters, and then the things that are, are the church age. So that's chapters 1 uh, through 3. Um, that represents the first three chapters. Now, we are somewhere uh, around here. That's, that's all we know. We are at the end of the church age, before the rapture, sometime in that time period. That's, that's all we know that we are. Now, uh, then we've got the rest of the book. That's everything that comes after uh, the church age. Now, at this point... You know, we're all glad we're getting to the things that come after the church age. That's all when we came here, the, the beasts and the, 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 the vials and the lake of fire and all that stuff. And we're going to get into that, just not tonight. Um, we're going to, I got to lay some foundation. Uh, because a lot of what we see in Revelation, we're going to start looking at next week in Daniel. Because uh, they are complementary uh, books. <clears throat> now, theologians uh, really disagree Pretty much about everything that happens from chapter 4 to chapter 22. Uh, now, why, why is there so much disagreement, do y'all think? Yeah. It's, it's very... Uh, ambiguous, and you can. You, there's a lot of things you can interpret from it. Some right, some wrong. But one of the main reasons I think most people get wrong or argue about it is we spend so much. We spend too much time looking at these passages in the lens of the future. We should be looking from the past to try to interpret them. What has God said that will help us understand what is going on uh, in these chapters? We should be looking back to things in history to help us understand what John is really saying. And once we understand that, uh, it's going to help us clarify kind of some what we're reading and what we're interpreting. And not just understand it and clarify it, but really how does, how does what we're seeing that will happen in the last days, how does that affect us today? You know, how should it change how we live today? So I want to start with some definitions. We're going to start looking at ages and last days. Uh, these are words we, we see throughout Scripture but we won't take time to define them long. So what do you think an age is? Okay, an age is a long, there it is, a long but finite time in God's program for creation. An age has an end. Now, an age can last for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 100 years, a million years. It's just a long but finite time in God's plan for creation. And this is where we see that in Mark chapter 10. <coughs> I'll let you all finish writing that down. So Mark chapter 10, uh, starting in verse number 29. <clears throat> Bible says, And Jesus answered and said, uh, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake, and the gospels, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, 
houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and land and with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. So we see in this passage, we see this time. He says, now a hundredfold in this time. That's the present age that we are living in. But then he says, in the world to come. That is the age to come. So we have two ages here, the present age and the age uh, to come. Now, there is a gap between these two ages. We've got the present age, which is what we are living in now. Then we've got the, the age to come, but there's a gap uh, between them. So, But this does tell us at some time in history, we will leave the present age and enter the age to come. Uh, and in the age to come, we're going to be, we're going to receive eternal life. Now, here's a, here's something a lot of people get confused about. If you're saved this evening, how many of y'all say that you know Christ is your Savior? All right. Got little sketchy arms back there at the back with, uh, the girls, you know, shocky back there. Uh, I don't think she understood the question. But, so you have, as a believer, you have the promise of eternal life. You don't have eternal life yet. Now, those believers who have gone, who have died before us, they have received eternal life. But we are just living on the promise of eternal life. Now, it is promised to us by God, who is faithful and always keeps His word. So we can know we will receive eternal life, but right now, you are not in the eternal body. <laughs> You, you're in a body that, that's going to age, uh, it's going to get sick, and one day if Jesus doesn't come back, it's going to die. Now again, for the believer, that's good news. Because no matter how bad life gets on this earth, no matter how sick we get on this earth, death is a victory for us. It's, it brings us into, it fulfills that promise of eternal life that gives that God has given us. So every day... We are closer to our new eternal body. We are promised eternal life, but you don't have it yet. So today, we live in the present age, but we look forward to the age to come where we will live with the, in eternity with God. So we know what the age are. So now we've got to figure out what last days are. Last days <clears throat> are a final period of the current age which ushers in the next age. <clears throat> and I make it confusing. It's a period of the current age that ushers in the next age. So the last days are part of the present age. Let's look over in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3. I'm just going to, it's on the screen, so I'm going to put it on the screen and read it from the screen. 2 Timothy 3. This, this know also that in the last days, that's a, a period of the current age, perilous times will come, Second Peter 3.3, 3, knowing this, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Now, I want to focus on how uh, the word last days is used here. So, in this case, right here, uh, where are the last days? In this this this. Graph, whatever. Where are the last days? Yeah, they're right there. They're at the end of the uh, last days. There is a some period in the present age that lets us know we are coming towards the next age, the age to come. Uh, and we, it's like a like a two minute warning. It gives us notice uh, that things are coming. Uh, look over in Hebrew chapters, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. God, who at sundry times and in divers' manners, that's talking about the past, spake in the times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom he also made the world. Now, what do you notice about this verse? Let me ask you a question. Historically, in this the church age, where was the writer of Hebrews? 
He's in the first century. The writer of Hebrews is writing to the church. He's in the first century. So he's at the very beginning of the church age. Talking about last days. He thought he lived in the last days even way, way back then. Um, he said in the first century uh, that they were already in the last days. Now, that's over 2,000 years ago. That's a very long two-minute warning that God's given us to let us know the end of the age is coming. It means that the present age that we are, that we are living in, this, this present age back here, right here, is it's, it's longer than the church. We tend to, especially in, in, in our culture, we look at basically all this started with the church. The present age started when the church started. But the present age started long before uh, the church ever uh, came to be. So, if we're looking at the present age again, basically, that's the present age is the entire time since creation from in the beginning started the present age until until now and, and past. We don't know when it's going to, uh, to, to look at. <clears throat> now, Looking at the present age in history, so the present age, the last days, that's where the church sits. During the last days. So really, the church age ushered in the two-minute warning that we are living in the last days before the, the, the age to come. So we are at the last stage of the last stage of this age. So a lot, a lot had to happen uh, to get us there. Now, what it should make us realize is that everything we're, we're looking at, uh, time, history, eternity, it's, it's not just about the church. God was working long before the church came along. When did the church start? There's a lot of debate, I think, Pentecost. Yeah, a lot of some people think with Jesus' birth, uh, but Pentecost. So we can all put it back in the first century. That's when the church started. Was God doing anything before then? Yeah. He was, we have an entire Old Testament you know, section of Scripture that tells us what God was doing in the earth long before the church came along. So God was working in and through people long before the church came into existence. And so... Our present age that we are living in is what the Bible calls the age of the Gentiles. The church age starts the, uh, what the Bible calls the age of the Gentiles. So let's look over in Luke chapter 21. It's on the screen, so you don't got to turn there, but I encourage you to turn there. It's always best to see it in your Bible. Luke 21, verse 24. <clears throat> And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of Gentiles until the time or the age of the Gentiles be fulfilled. See, Jesus is, is talking about events that would happen after his death, burial, and resurrection. The, the times uh, in, in this passage is the Greek word kairos, and it means a measure of time. Uh, or it can mean, you know, the word fulfilled means to be complete. So Jesus said there is an age of the Gentiles, uh, a, a time, a measure of time that will be completed. And when that, that, that age of Gentiles is complete, then we'll usher in the last days. So Jesus uh, identified or defined the age of the Gentiles by three things that we can see in Scripture. So the three things that Jesus said the age of the Gentiles would be defined by is number one, Israel would be defeated by Gentile powers. Uh, again, we see that. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the age of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So Jesus said one thing we can, we can see to know that we're in the age of the Gentiles is Israel will be defeated by Gentile power. Second thing, Israel will be dispersed into all the nations. They will be led out of Israel in captivity and spread throughout the world. 
So before the age of the Gentiles, 99.9% of Jews lived in Israel. You know where most Jews live now? New York City. That's literally where the, the biggest population of, of Jewish people are. Uh, but they're all over the world. They're in Europe. They're in Russia. They're in, 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 in uh, all over the world. So you can, they've been dispersed all the world. The third thing Jesus said that would define the age of the Gentiles is Jerusalem would be trampled by the Gentiles. Jerusalem would be destroyed by a Gentile power. Now, this is collectively what defines the age that we are a part of, and this age will continue until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. So, learning that our present, what we're learning here is our present age is clocked by something. It is timed by something. Anybody know what it is? Our, our present age can be clocked by Israel and what's happening in Israel. Um, so, when does this age begin? So, we, we know that we're in the time of the Gentiles because of uh, what's happening in Israel. But this age began uh, when, the age of the Gentiles began when Israel was defeated by a Gentile power when Israel was dispersed into all the nations, and when Jerusalem was trampled by the Gentiles. Anybody have any idea when that happened? Yeah. No. Look at this timeline. You can't read it. It's in your notes. All right? This is a timeline of things that have happened in Jerusalem and Israel. It's, it ends... With Herod's temple uh, was destroyed, Herod destroyed the temple in 70 AD. That was the last time the temple was destroyed. Right about here, Jesus, this is, and this is really kind of when the timeline ended, but Jesus is telling us of the age of Gentiles way back in 30 CE. Um, the rule of Rome begins in 63 BC. Uh, the Hellenization of Judah it's a big word for saying the Jews started becoming more like the Greeks, uh, culturally, how they lived their life. Uh, happened in 323 B.C. The temple was finished after it was destroyed the first time. In 516 B.C., uh, the fall of Babylon uh, and then Judah's return in 536 B.C. Then the Babylonian captivity happened in 586 B.C., but it all began in 605 B.C., when Nebuchadnezzar defeated Israel for the first time. In 605 B.C., Nebuchadnezzar was the first nation, Gentile nation, to ever come into Israel. Now, Israel had been defeated in battle before, but they're the first nation to come into Israel, completely destroy them, capture all of them. There have been people who'd come in and captured Israel and left them as slaves in Israel, and some of them taken captive before but since the creation of Israel after Moses, because the, you know, the nation of Israel started in Judges, uh, really, because that's when everything had finally been finished, they were in their promised land, there had been kind of Philistines had come in and raid, and there would be skirmishes. But Nebuchadnezzar, the first king to ever defeat Israel completely for the first time, came in, destroyed the temple, captured all of Israel, and led them away captive. So the first time in all of human history, a Gentile king did all three. He defeated them, he dispersed them throughout the nations, and he destroyed Jerusalem. So that means that the age of the Gentiles began way back in 605 B.C. Uh, and it's continued since that time. Now, there are a few moments... Uh, when Israel has reclaimed some of their nation, but another nation, would, a Gentile nation, would come in and do the same. Even today, the Jewish people do not have access to the Temple Mount. They cannot, they, I mean, they, they are Jews in Jerusalem, but uh, there is a wall around their most holy section, and a, a, a Muslim mosque sits on top of it, 
and Jews cannot go into the temple in Jerusalem and worship like God has commanded them to do. They are still being oppressed and ruled by Gentile nations. Um, so the age of Gentiles began way back in 605 B.C., and it's going to continue until the end of the present age. Now, why do we go through all this? Because when did the book of Daniel take place? You should know the time frame. Who was the king Daniel was served under? Six, around 605 B.C., Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel received his visions about the end of days right at the beginning of the age of the Gentiles. So next week, we're going to look at... Uh, so we got the age of Gentiles since then. So next week, we're going to start looking at the book of Daniel. We're going to look at Daniel 2 and Daniel 7. Thank you for listening to this message from New Grace Baptist Church. For more information about New Grace, check out our website at www.reachingroanoke.com.